Hi everyone. Welcome back. In this episode of Starting with Starling, I'll talk about displaying or rendering text using Starling framework. We'll also calculate simple scores for the distance the hero has traveled and use one of the text display methods and render the score in the in-game screen. Let's start by understanding how text fields work in Starling. There are two ways of rendering text fields in Starling framework. One is using embedded fonts and the other is using bitmap fonts. Let's quickly understand what happens in each of these cases. When using embedded fonts, you embed a font file like .ttf or .otf just like you do with a bitmap image. Then you draw or request to render a text field on screen. Now here's where the real work happens. Starling framework draws a flash vector text field in the memory and without rendering it on the screen, the drawn text field is captured as a bitmap snapshot. This snapshot is sent to the GPU to render. Understand that this is an extra effort of drawing the text field once, taking a snapshot of it and sending it to GPU and GPU rendering or drawing it on the Starlink's display list again. So that's what happens. You get a very flexible text display with any size or different text field parameter modifications. But the disadvantage is that since there is a lot going on in the background, it takes time to render. This could still work out well in certain cases where you render content well before the interaction happens and also when there are less text fields or objects to render. Okay, now to the second method which is using bitmap fonts. Here, as the name suggests, you do the creation of bitmap for your text beforehand and embed that as a font. Starling will just send it to the GPU and render it. Starling's work is simpler here and faster too, but you have got some work to do. First, create a bitmap font. This can be done using a third party utility app. I use an app called Glyph Designer on my Mac. For Windows, you could use an app called BM Font from angelcode.com. Using this software, you create or define different glyphs for your font and generate a bitmap font. This is almost similar to how a sprite sheet works. A PNG file with all the character images combined and to assist with specifying the position and size of each character, a data file. So instead of just embedding one font like you did with the embedded fonts method, you would need to generate these font files and embed two files, the image and the data file. Alright, now that we understand how these two methods work, let's get to implementing them. The first thing we'll do before embedding the font files is to identify the variable to track the score through the progress of the game. I'll take the distance as the example for this exercise and for that we already have the score distance variable being updated in the on game tick function. Next thing we'll do is to use embedded fonts to display a text field. For this let's get into the assets class and now for the font file I have downloaded a free font from one of the sites. You can search online for one if you want to test. I have one right in my desktop and I'll copy that to my project folder now. It is a true type font. If you already have a font installed on your system and you want to embed that, I recommend you copy that font to your project folder. On Mac, your user fonts will probably be stored on slash users, slash your username, slash library, slash fonts folder. And on Windows, the folder is probably system drive, slash windows, slash fonts. Now I'll copy the font file from my desktop and paste it in the Flash Builder Package Explorer into the folder Fonts in the Media subfolder of my project. Next, we'll need to embed the font. So in the Assets class, I'll write the embed code. Embed source is equal to dot dot slash media slash fonts slash embedded slash the font name. Comma, font family is equal to my font name. This is a custom name I define. Comma, embed as CFF is equal to false. I'll store that in public static where my font of type class. All right. Now that we have the embedded font, we'll need to create a text field that's going to make use of this font. So let's get into the ingame.as and declare a new object, private, where score text of type 
text field. Make sure you choose starling.text.text field and not flash.text.text field. Okay. Let me go ahead and define this in the on added to stage method right after the draw game function call. You are free to organize this code better by defining this at the end of draw game method or define a different function altogether. Score text is equal to new text field and the first parameter will be the width. Let's give it 300 and then the height, say 100. Then comes the actual text that needs to be displayed. This will be score with a capital S and a colon. Leave a space and write zero. We'll alter this dynamically in runtime. Now is when we specify the font name for this text field. You may simply give it as my font name as a string. This, if you remember, was the font family property we specified in the embed code. The next parameter will be the size of the text, 24, and the color, 0, X, FF, FF, FF. And then let's add the text field to the display list. This dot, add child, score text. Now that we have added the text field, it's time to update it with our real score variable, score distance. As soon as we update the score distance inside the on game tick function, let's write score text dot text is equal to score plus score distance. Let's save and run. There you should see the score being shown on the screen. Great. That's how you use the embedded font. All right. Okay, let's explore the bitmap fonts for now. I'll open Glyph Designer, choose the font I need from the installed fonts on my machine. I'll choose a font size 24. On the right hand side, I have some options to set for the visuals of the characters. Let me turn off the outline and let me change the fill type to solid. I'll also change the color to white. Now don't worry. The background color you see here is only for preview purpose. When we export the font, it will be exported as a PNG file with a transparent background. Even so, for previewing better, under the texture atlas section, I'll change the color to something like blue. Yes, that looks close. Now, do experiment with all the other options. I'll also change the shadow options by setting the blur radius to zero. That's exactly what I want. Now you can notice a section here that says included glyphs. By default, all the characters are added here. But if you would like to conserve memory and reduce the size of your texture atlas, you can only include the glyphs that you really need. For example, in this case, you can just manually specify that you want a capital S, C, O, R, E, a colon, a space, and then the numbers 0 to 9. Be careful and don't forget the necessary characters. Just being a little careless, for now I'll reset it back. Alright, now the font looks good. The only thing to do is to generate the texture atlas. So go ahead and click export button. Choose the folder you need to export it to. Give it a name. My font. Make sure you choose the export type as Sparrow XML. And click save. And that's it. You're done with this part. Let's now go back to Flash Builder. You should be able to see the new bitmap font files in the fonts folder. If you just open the .fnt file in Flash Builder, you can see that it's a simple XML file, just like we had the XML data file for our assets sprite sheet. Time to embed this. I'll just copy and paste the embed code of my sprite sheet and change this to fonts slash and the name is myfont.png the constant is font texture this will become fonts slash again and my font is the name dot xml will change to dot fnt the name of the constant is font xml Okay, 
Just like we did with the asset sprite sheet, we'll need a variable that can refer to both of these. In that scenario, we created a variable of type texture atlas and instantiated it to contain both the PNG and the XML. We'll do something very similar to that here. The difference is that this variable will be of type bitmap font. So let me declare a variable public static variable my font of type bitmap font. This needs to be initialized. I would recommend you to follow a much efficient approach that we have done for initializing the graphic assets for the game. But for now, I'll create a simple method public static function get font and this will return an object of type bitmap font. Inside this, I'll initialize the image and the data file where font texture of type texture is equal to texture dot from bitmap new font texture where font XML of type XML is equal to XML new font XML. Then I'll create a new variable of type bitmap font where font of type bitmap font is equal to new bitmap font. This will include font texture and font XML objects. And now to return back the font object. Return font. One tiny little thing to do at this stage is to import a class. Import starling dot text dot text field and right after we declare and initialize the bitmap font object register that object as a font that is done by simply writing text field dot register bitmap font and pass the bitmap font object don't forget this step all right let's quickly recap the process first identify the font you want to use choose that in the glyph designer generate the png and the data files these are used almost the same way as the asset sprite sheet files. Once generated, copy them to your project folders and embed them. After embedding, create a function, initialize both the image and the data as texture and XML objects respectively. Combine both of them into a new object of type bitmap font. Finally, register and return this bitmap font object. Okay, where will we return this to? Let's get into the ingame.as for that. Inside the on added to stage method, we have already created a text field, right? Let's just change the name of this font here from my font name to assets dot get font, which will return the font object and access its name by simply typing dot name. That's it. Save and run. This looks great. We also got a nice little drop shadow there for our font, just like we customized it in the Glyph Designer. Fine, we are pretty much done with the understanding of how to use fonts in our text fields. Let's quickly jump into how to handle the text fields in Starling. In many ways, a Starling text field is similar to the Flash text field, but in some ways it is different. Since Starling has to generate a bitmap on the fly based on your text, it is efficient and mandatory to pass the width and height of the intended text field right in the constructor. By default, the text inside the text field is center aligned horizontally and vertically aligned to the middle. You can change these by using the properties like textField.HAlign and TextField.VAlign. These properties accept string values that are stored as constants in these classes. Starling.Utils.HAlign and starling.utils.vAlign. So if I have to perform this and align the text to the top left, I'll have to first import starling.utils.hAlign and import starling.utils.vAlign. Then after the text field is created, I'll have to type score text.hAlign is equal to hAlign dot left 
score text dot v align is equal to v align dot top. I'll also give values for x and y positions. So score text dot x is equal to twenty. Score text dot y is equal to twenty. You may also set a border to your text fields, maybe to verify the dimensions of it. Score text dot border is equal to true. Let me run that for you. There you go. It's now left and top aligned. Furthermore, if you want to reduce the width or height approximately to what is required, instead of a fixed 300 pixels by 100 pixels, you can specify score text dot height is equal to score text dot text bounds dot height let me just add an extra 10 pixels just in case and i'll run it see that it would also be helpful to go through the documentation of the text field class and explore the other properties as you have seen the recommended one is the bitmap font over the embedded font as even though you do a little extra work in the beginning the rendering performance is better than using an embedded font That's because the output is not a vector graphic but a raster. So that's it guys, the two types of fonts that you can use in Starling based games. In the next episode, I'll talk about particles, both manually created particles for beginners and also awesome particles that get auto generated based on certain properties you specify. Until then, if you haven't, do subscribe for my tutorials, leave your valuable feedback and see you soon.